With Season T1 finally up, it's finally to give you the best investments in Code of Dragons. Because we've got all the Generation 1 and Generation 2 heroes. And you're probably wondering what are the best heroes to be investing into with the brand new patch coming out with the new archers, new mages, new infantry, and a new cavalry. That's all the generational free heroes to come, right? So let's go over the best investments, in my opinion, in Call of Dragons. Hello, yes, smash the like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos with me. And today we are going through the best of the best, I think, investments in Call of Dragons. And I'm not gonna lie, this is gonna be tailored to the best of the best. So if you are spending or not, I'm sorry, it's not gonna be tailored to the free to players, right? Because it is all about thinking about the maximum, right? I will do, if you want a comment, just put a comment below. If you want me to do a more free to play, low spender, what are the better ones to be going for and what are the minimals you need, I will make that video too. But for this one, it's specifically for the best must haves, I think, in Call of Dragons, right? It's not gonna be in any particular order, but I am gonna get rid of a couple of these straight away, right? And ones that I'm gonna put is gonna be in the ignore category. So these are guys that I just ignore, and the reason why I'm saying just ignore these is because of the simple fact you're gonna unlock them through gold keys, right? So this is gonna be like your back sheets. We're even looking at your Nikos. We're even looking at obviously Groot, which is obviously sad to hear. Even um, our Emrys, but we will talk about Emrys a little bit more compared to any of the other heroes. Um, we've got Fear, but we're gonna talk about Fear too. And then on top of all of this, Valen, right? So we've got a bunch of these a gold key heroes all in here and Nika, right? So we've got all of them placed in. I'm gonna leave them all in the ignore tier for now, but I am gonna move a couple of them up for certain reasons and you'll see why, right? So if you're starting out brand new account, right? Season one and you're looking for season one heroes and season two, what are the best investments, right? So one thing I'm gonna say straight away, and I think this is a must have investment in the game, so no matter what, it's going to be Syndrion because Syndrion is insane for archers because he doubles up all of your normal attack damage, right? And this is very, very important because it means certain talents or certain passives that require normal attacks to trigger, you're doubling up on the chances, right? This is obviously really key when you see the Syndrion and Freegar match. That is super powerful, but you can see Syndrion used even as with Kanara and other heroes um, in the meta, right? Which is crazy for the T5s and T4 players. The one thing with Syndrome though, and why I think he still is a must have investment in Con Dragon, especially in 2024, is the brand new heroes. We've seen already one of the heroes has the precision tree with him. So there is some assumption, potentially, this new archer hero could follow Sue to Toha, where his actual active ability isn't an active ability, but a fourth passive where you're hitting certain requirements and you need to hit normal attack for this to trigger. And if that is the case, Syndron is going to be a must pick with that hero. So definitely, I think uh, this is a future-proof hero. I definitely think he's one of the best heroes in the game so far, still to this day, and he pumps out tons of damage. So nice and simple, right, Syndron. Uh, hero that we are going to put down more of a meh investment in this game, in my opinion, is going to be your Theodore. Because I'm not going to lie, people might like Theodore, but we are getting into the generational free heroes. And I do believe the generational free heroes are going to outperform this guy very quickly. And the fact is, if they're going to outperform him, you're not going to be happy if you've invested heads into Theo compared to anyone else, right? If you're a big spender and you might have done a Strongest Lord event and you've unlocked him, it's okay, right? You've got this hero, you're going to be able to use him. It's nothing too crazy. But I don't think you want to be wasting so much onto this hero, especially with the brand new cav changes. They are in the water and they are honestly needing some TLC because they're not in a good place, right? There, you can see all of the heroes down below. We've got quite a lot to go through. I'm only going to go through the legendary ones for today, but I hope you guys enjoy today's video, right? 
One hero I am going to talk about, and it's not a hero that you need to spend any money on, and I actually am going to say to everyone you need to go for her, is Indus. And she is actually a good investment. And the only way you can get her, as you know, is through the Dragon Trials. And the earlier on you can get this hero to 5115, or even better, a 5155 Indus, Boys, you are cooking, man. She does so much t tanking for your team. She also allows you to pump out so much extra damage. And especially as a T4 player as well, and even a T5 player, you can pair in this up with some interesting combos like Lilia or even like an Atheist to generate a massive rage engine to just nuke your opponents with your other marchers, right? And I do believe in the future when more and more heroes are coming out, you're going to start seeing Indus played a lot more because her infirm when she is awakened is so strong, right? So do not sleep on a hero. She's a good hero. Definitely work on her. And she's free, right? So everyone's going to be happy about that. But when we're talking about a great investment now, and this is going back to Cavalry, it is going to be Forendil. I think Forendil is a great investment because I think out of all of the Cavalry heroes in the game, he is arguably the most safest and the most investable choice out of all of them because he provides you that easy mechanic as you guys know the cowardice it's so powerful and then on top of this he has the beautiful skill right where he can be a primary or a deputy and you get benefits either or right so this is great for the future you can use him potentially as the primary or the secondary depending on what the new cavalry heroes are going to be and on top of all that to be fair the guy's a flying cavalry hero you're going to use him in spring wardens with that fear and on top of all of that as well he has his awakening skill gives you defense penetration right so you just get five insane pvp skills definitely worth investing into and he's a great investment so that's why i would put him more of a good investment if you're looking for a cavalry choice in call of dragons right so let's go into a bit more of where i know a lot more of and this is infantry right and i've got some hot takes on infantry that a lot of people probably are gonna look at and probably raise eyebrows right but I'm going to put Goresh as a must-have straight away because Goresh is just absolute bonkers in this game. He just does an insane amount of damage. He actually does a great deal of tanking because he reduces the amount of damage taken by 50%. And on top of all of that, you know, he gives you that extra attack bonus, empowering your infantry to deal a bit extra damage, right? But the problem with, and I think this is where the power of Goresh is going to go, is again in the future with more generational free heroes. Because if you've played Rise of Kingdoms, this might settle a little bit more with you. But he gives me that Harold Sigurdsson vibe, right? The guy that does crazy AoE damage and he's pretty tanky on his own. But to make him even powerful is when you do get that second infantry hero that isn't actually the one that came out of him, but comes down a couple of down, you know, seat generations later and makes him super tanky and makes him super, super tanky where you just able to generate so much damage because of it right so I, I think he's a great hero he's definitely for a spender a must have because when you awaken this hero you're going to be using him for passes you're going to be using him for rallies you're going to be using him in the open field you're going to be even using him as a t5 behemoth infantry like leader because that's how good he is he's just that powerful in the game so i definitely would say it must have is a goresh but then when it comes to the other one, Schoolgirl, I'm going to put as her as a great investment. I'm not saying she's bad at all. But the thing is, with her, she's definitely made with Goresh, right? These two are definitely work together. But I think Goresh always puts it out on top. And the reason why I always think he puts it out on top is just the fact that at triple five one, you've got everything you need in this hero. And the thing is, with I do believe on your Schoolgirl, if you have a triple five one Skogel, it's okay, it's a great investment, but when you awaken her, that's when she does go into a complete different level. That's when she does insane amounts of damage. But again, that's a lot of investment you need to do 
for a hero that might get outclassed in this new generational free heroes. That's why I'm putting her as a great investment. I'm not going to put her as the top tier because I just think even as a 5-5-5-1, five, 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 you know, Gresh, you're going to be better off compared to the Skogel. And I've been doing way better trades with my Gresh over the Skogel. So I've not looked back since. And that's my opinion. You might not agree with me. I understand a lot of people prefer Skogel over Gresh, but I do think for future proofing, you'll be surprised, right? So now let's go into some other heroes that you guys will know of, right? And we're going to go to Bertrand. And I'm going to put Bertrand actually as just a good hero. Because I do think he is a good hero. He's definitely better than Indus, obviously. And he's a great hero to invest into. Especially for all the lower spenders and free-to-players that are looking for a mage hero. Because the beautiful thing about him and a lot of people try to devalue him in a 1v1 test is that skill 4, right? Not being targeted, you get a bunch of stats. And as you guys know, Atheus with your Bertrand or even your Fear with your Bertrand with those Slash Door units is absolute nasty. And when you've got like 20 to 30 Slash Door units, you're not getting targeted, you're getting that uptime buff and you're just dealing a ton of damage. So it's really, really good for that purpose alone, right? And then on top of it, if you are a spender and you awaken this hero, you're gonna get access to one of the art dis most destructive pairings in the game. And this is when you get Toha. And I do wanna just go straight into Toha because honestly, I do say Toha is gonna be a must have hero. It's crazy that I did not think he would be a must have hero. But he definitely is. And I'm going to be testing him at 5111 just to give him even more justification on how strong he is. But it's when you look at this just whole hero, he deals just an absurd amount of damage in Call of Dragons. He also gives you an absurd amount of stats. And that's what's even more important about this hero. He does great damage. But the amount of sheer stats you get is just scary. And you can imagine even with a brand new generational free hero in the game that's coming that might have area of effect damage. If you pair that up with a Toha that's giving him 30% extra hero skill damage. And extra attack when he's channeling his ability. And extra defense and extra counter attack damage plus whatever they've got. Yeah, it's, it's not even funny, boys. Pomba is arguably was the worst mage hero of design, right? Because they didn't listen correctly. And obviously, they changed him. And as soon as they've changed him, he is top tier. He's definitely a must-have hero in this game. Even at 5-1-1-1-1. And if you want to try and get a minimal investment, certain players have different opinions. But you can either get him 5-1-5-1 or 5115. There's different reasonings before uh, for each one. Do you want extra hero skill damage? Do you do more damage? Or do you want to just be more tankier, right? And actually sustain in battle. Both of them are really good. I'm not going to lie to you. So choose at will. Must have hero is Toha, right? So now let's come into a little bit of a different realm, right? Because these so far are pretty much heroes that I know a lot of people might see in um, you're not able to obtain because they're strongest lord heroes. But these next two heroes I'm going to talk about, you definitely cannot obtain unless you're a spender. And it's Lilia and Hosk, right? I'm not going to lie. Hosk, in my eyes, is a meh hero because of one reason. He is only used in one match. I'm sorry. If you're the guy who tries to justify spending 200 bucks on Hosk, fair enough, right? But... The thing is, when you are buying Hoss, you're getting the treaties, you're getting some extra stuff, which is more beneficial. But if you are just investing into a hero, I just don't see it, man. I'd rather not spend nearly 200 plus bucks on Hoss just to run Kanara and Hoss, or Hoss Kanara, shall I say, in a Archer combo. It is a merit printing machine, I must admit. But I don't think it's worth it. And I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. And I'm happy they proved wrong when maybe these generational free heroes come out. And maybe one of them or another, maybe two of them are really good with Hosk as well. And that might give him a little bit more viability. But for an investment, guys, let's be honest. You are not investing so much money into just one hero. And the thing is, I know the argument for Hosk, he's one of the cheapest heroes, right? He's very cheap to awaken, it's 200 bucks, compared to maybe spending loads and loads of gems to awaken one hero, right? So, 
that is it but i'm gonna keep him in the met category he is good he's okay he's not bad you know he does his job as a merit printing machine for the archers but that's pretty much it however lilia is a great investment and the thing is i want to put her as a must-have investment hero as well but the thing is i don't know where to place her i would rather have an extra category just for this hero right because the thing is when you have this hero in general right she is the best the best pvp hero in the game at the current time i don't care she is the best pvp current game hero right she does insane air of effect damage she does insane scorch effects on top of that and she just gives you just straight out attack right she just wants to kill things she does it great she has the skill tree to back it all up and she's very very cheap even at 5 one, 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 one people use her and are so scared of how many merits they're printing that's how good she is right she is a great investment is she a must-have though that's where i'm gonna now kind of lean into again generational free heroes because maybe when the generational free majors come out we can re-talk about this and maybe she is going to be a must-have hero in the game again but until then i'm going to keep her as a great investment to be safe because she is one of the best if not the best mage in the game for pvp like i've said and she does insane value for that but she might get unfortunately outshunned right with the generational free heroes but with her and i can imagine with a generational free hero you're gonna be cooking too so that's why i want to keep her in great she's a great hero she's not bad at all in this game right so now let's talk about the last three legendary heroes and then i'm going to start shuffling these and then finish up this video and keep it nice and sweet so we don't go over the 20 minute or 30 minute mark so we've got frega and Frega, again, I'm going to put as a great investment. She is a great investment in this game, right? Because the thing is with her, and if we just shuffle these a little bit about, because I think if we do it like this, it looks a little bit more in order. What I would say with Frega is she's really powerful in Season 2, right? You need a Sindri on Frega in Season 2 if you're a spender because it just does the most amount of damage and it's not even funny on how much damage this shit's out, right? But we're going into Generational 3 and who knows, there might be a Archer hero who is all about normal attack damage again that does something different to Frega and he's just much better with Syndrome. And that's why I'm a bit skeptical. Because the thing is, she is a great hero. Even at triple five one, she's so good for that value. Even at double five one one, she's so good for that value, right? So if you're looking for just like a mid investment, she's definitely a great one for your archers. Because the thing is, what I'm still gonna say to this day, and I don't care what anyone says. Kanara is a must-have, and because Kanara is a must-have, even if a generational free hero is good and outbeats Frega, and it goes Syndron with um, Zayda, right, the brand new Archer, if that's the combo, maybe you're gonna run the Kanara and Frega combo from Lucky Wheel to Lucky Wheel, because a lot of players have been running this, and a lot of people get some really good results about it, because it is purely PvP focus. It reduces damage dealt, it reduces rage accumulation speed, it does a ton of damage as well, because the crit chance plus all of the attack steroids, and you do the physical defense break, right, when you awaken your Kanara. So she is going to be a must-have hero, I think, out of all the archer heroes as well. She's basically the Saladin of the archers. She's going to be one of those heroes that you can awaken and confidently use throughout the next few seasons still, and the next few generation of heroes, because none of the heroes we've had so far does what she does. She does some really good tanking, she does some really good damage, and she has some really good trees to back it all up. So she has a perfect kit for any situation in the future. So she is a definitely a must-have investment in my eyes. And then we've got, finally, the Madeline. And Madeline, I'm still going to put as a great investment. She's just poggers, dude. Like, people love Goresh Skogel, I know, but dude, if you still have that Awakened Madeline and you're running, like, an Awakened Madeline with a 5511 Skogel or a 555 Goresh, 
you'd be surprised on how much damage that is pumping out and how much you tank on top of it right it's so surprising how much damage you're tanking because of the reduced damage taken when she's awakened so she's definitely a great investment from season one she's carried her own weight all the way through right so what i'm going to do now just to finish up this video before we hit over the 20 minute mark is change a little bit of these ratings right because you can see all of these are gold key heroes as well as these guys here and what i'm going to basically say is again just to kind of finish up this video if you're a specialist spender and you really want to run canara and hosk do it that's that's for you right i'm not going to hate you for it it's for you but for most people is it a great investment or a good investment no you can probably spend that money elsewhere in the game right but we do have a couple of heroes in the gold keys that if you're in season one or if you're a brand new hero or maybe you've got all the heroes above sorted out and you're thinking of how can I just maximize, you know, any spending, right? And you're trying to figure out one. Two heroes definitely that are good in this game. And the one thing I'm going to give everyone else, please don't invest in gold key heroes because if you invest in gold key heroes, you're going to hate yourself when they're awakened and you keep getting those heads and you can't use them as of now, right? But two heroes that i really want to talk about is your mages right your mages are really really powerful right fear when she is awakened is a monster and a, a, an amazing combo that's been running around fear and lelia in powering up that valen and waldea match or your toha and bertrand and you're just cooking you're just cooking as much damage as possible it's terrifying right so there's a really good combination there and obviously valen is no surprise valen is arguably the best in my opinion the best gold key commander out there if you get him and you invest into him as a major spender i wouldn't hate you for it but most players honestly you're gonna be happy when you get this hero but apart from that everything i think is pretty much set in stone right and ignore all of these heroes down here why because all of these heroes you're gonna get through gold keys right you're gonna get these in gold key chests you're not gonna be spending your hard earned money or your legendary tokens or any of your generational tokens on these heroes you're gonna be using them on any of the heroes generally above right so that is the, the whole investment i'm not gonna go any crazier i hope you guys have enjoyed it Give your opinions down below. I am going to, if you want to make me, you know, a, a low spender, free to play one, I can do that. But in my eyes, this is the best investment right here in the game as of now. If you want to prepare for generational free heroes and the brand new season that's coming out. So with all of that, you know what to do. Smash like, comment, and subscribe. Until the next one, stay safe, stay sneaky, guys, and peace out.